Hi guys, so Rosie with the Cackling Moon. <laughs> um, I wanted to get on here and film a video. It's been a while. Um, and I really wanted to talk about something that has been on my mind, obviously, for the last few days. Um, so <laughs> as you guys know, I read tarot. I have been reading tarot since 2012. I studied the tarot for about a year and a half and started reading for free and then I transitioned into charging like cheapy readings and then now I do full-blown readings for clients on a daily basis um, and it's beautiful it's an amazing journey it's something that I love to do it's my life purpose <laughs> and part of this whole journey is the whole transition of me becoming familiar and more comfortable with my mediumship abilities okay so when I first started the tarot journey I started it with that intention of wanting to be this amazing tarot reader right I wanted to read the cards I wanted to tap into my intuition I wanted to be able to connect with spirit that was one of the big things that I wanted to do with my um with my tarot reading I knew some readers who would connect with spirit with the cards and I found that to be extremely extremely exciting and just it totally grabbed my attention because mediumship has always been um, that thing <sighs> that ability that psychic ability that I have always wanted to have a part of um, I don't know what it is about it, <laughs> why I find it so amazing and so just, I think it's the ability to connect with a past loved one and to be able to bring that message to a person who is in grieving stage, um, in a heavy grieving stage, or just to give that person the ability to kind of blend in with the other realm is to me something I want to be a part of so <laughs> um, I did start my tarot journey with the intention of wanting to connect with spirit in that way um, I will say that my tarot journey has um, definitely allowed me to evolve my intuition um, I have 100% seen a shift a shift in myself um, as far as my intuition goes I definitely see, um, hi Luna, um, I definitely see myself trusting my intuition on a daily ba basis. I catch the messages that spirit is sending to me, that my guides are sending to me. I have made profound connections to spirit guides. Um, that's a whole other video. Um, and I feel like my mediumship abilities have always been there. I just had to find a way to bring them out and I feel like tarot reading kind of allows me to do that. It's kind of like the the tool that I needed <laughs> to jumpstart my connection to spirit. Come here, Luna. Maybe Luna will make an appearance in the video. Come here. Come here. Come here. She's so, she's so, um, she's always curious. It's funny because sometimes I catch her in my room, like this is my crystal room. So I'll catch her and she's like, sitting on my chair, just laying down, chilling in here when she wants some peace and quiet. She really loves the energies in this room. <laughs> okay, so this whole video is going to be about mediumship. Um, my perspective on it and some tools and tricks and tips and some books that I recommend that you guys read if you are wanting to connect um mediumship with your tarot this is gonna be probably a class that i want to offer later on because this is actually something that i'm doing physically right now um and so i want to kind of teach how to do that <laughs> um because like i said this was like one of the biggest reasons why i started reading tarot because i wanted to connect um so i'm just going to kind of reveal to you guys some some um books tools that I recommend when connecting with spirit, okay? Um, so let's start with the books because those are to me like the first the first thing that um, 
that I think I would recommend even before tarot is reading a book. So if you have an interest in mediumship um, or you want to learn to evolve your abilities, maybe you already are connecting with spirit or maybe you have connected with spirit but you don't know how to control it or you know, you just kind of want some a guide, a mentor without paying the billions of dollars. <laughs> no, it's not billions. <laughs> you could totally get really cool mediumship mentorship um, if it's you just kind of stumble on it. And I'll explain that in a little bit, too. So some books that I recommend. So this is one of the books that I'm currently reading right now, which has already started my um, my thirst for connecting with spirit all over again um is called there's more to life than this healing messages remarkable stories and insight about the other side obviously it's by the long island medium i'm sure those of you guys who are into med mediumship will know who Teresa is <laughs> um so she's one of those well-known mediums that pops up on tv and she has her own show and she has a lot of um, other books out this is the first one i've ever read that she wrote and I really like it. I'm only, I would say, barely into it. Like, literally, I have a quarter of a way. <laughs> but I'm already hooked. Like, it's so good. And just a lot of the stuff that she's already described about her experience with mediumship and her experience of, um, of spirit to me is... It's just she the way she speaks and the way she teaches it is so... It, to me, it makes sense to me. It's not too um, textbook. So... That's the first book I recommend. I also recommend like diving into spiritual related, mediumship related books if you want to enhance your abilities or get started into this, you know, kind of stuff. You really got to feed your soul <laughs> on the subject matter because that's the only way you're going to kind of dive in. Now, one of the first books that I was recommended by another reader um, is called Spirited. It's by Rebecca Rosen, who is also another pretty well-known medium, maybe not as well-known as Teresa, but um, she's wrote the book Spirited, Unlock Your Psychic Self and Change Your Life. This one I read cover to cover, and I started to read it a second time. Um, it is really good. She talks about her experiences with how she came into mediumship. She talked about how she connects. Um, and then, you know, just how it weighs, it's kind of like a little bit of a workbook sort of, you know, like she gives you activities to try and, and it's just really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was recommended to me by another reader, um, because that it helped them. <laughs> so different books, different mediums are going to resonate with you. Maybe you guys don't like Teresa, but maybe you'll like Rebecca, you know what I mean? So it just depends. Um, the other thing, this book was actually assigned to me because her last name is Rosen and Rose is the name, the spiritual name that I chose for myself. Um, and so it's hard to explain, but at the time when this book fell into my being, <laughs> um, I, it was actually a sign in itself, her name. So I knew I had to, I had to read this one. So it, this was a book that helped me along my journey when I first got into it. Um, another one I recommend is called Medium, a step-by-step -step guide to communicating with the spirit world. This one's by Constanza Morningstar. Um, I have not read the whole thing. I got maybe three quarters of the way through, but as you could see, I dog-eared a shitload of pages um, because there's a lot of activities in this one. Um, a lot of like... Um, <laughs> spiritual prayers that you can say there's like activities for um, meditations it's really good it's a really good book so um I wouldn't recommend you guys something that I that I wouldn't find helpful for myself so everything here that I'm telling you guys is something that I, I really have appreciated it in my own way um she just, she, this is more of like an activity book, okay? Whereas like Spirited and Teresa's books are more like their personal journeys. This is more of like an activity book. So if you're looking for um, activities to, you know, to practice your mediumship or how to meditate or whatever, like this would be a good book for that. So I will list all of the books in the, um, the description so you guys can have them. <laughs> Um, the other one, the final one that I would recommend is called Life in the Afterlife, Embrace Where We Go. 
um, where we go in spirit on the other side and the unbreakable bond. This is by Melinda Lyons. So Melinda is, um, I like to think of her as an indie, <laughs> an indie and independent indie, um, medium. So I stumbled across her YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, like three years ago. And she was doing a lot of videos where she was talking about um, her near-death experience. And I was attracted to that story. I was attracted to her experience. And the fact that Melinda is, is she still has a relationship with God, but in a different way. You know, it's not like the, um, the religious like the religious strict relationship with God. You know what I mean? I don't know if you know what I mean, but that, <laughs> she has her own relationship with God. And I really appreciate, um, some of the stuff that she talks about. And so she mentioned she, um, had published her own book and it's available through, um, Amazon. Now, the thing with this book, this this was another sign. <laughs> when I purchased Melinda's book, my brother had passed. So I, okay, I stumbled upon Melinda's YouTube channel around the time that my brother was really sick. And then he passed away and I had purchased her book. And the day that he passed away, I had received um, a crystal. It was a little crystal skull. He's up around somewhere in my room. And I named it after him, right? And so that was like a little gift I felt. It was like I had purchased this crystal skull, but it was delivered to my place at the same time that my brother had passed away. So I took it as it's a symbol of his soul, right? And then <laughs> and then um, a few days later, literally after he passed, I received Melinda's book in the mail. And um, oh, I have a Christmas card for my grandma. <laughs> um, and dated in the back of the book where it was okay so when I guess when you order like a self-published book on Amazon they print it like then and there right so it's not like it's a book that you order off of Barnes and Noble and you get it like it's not like you know and you know what I mean like you don't go to the store and pick this book up you have to order it through Amazon and so when it was printed, it's dated in the back of the book when it was printed and the date of the book is the date that my brother passed away to the day, to the year. So <laughs> it was a sign for me that this was a message that I needed. This was, this book needed to be in my possession. So I'm telling you guys, like if you go into this journey, mediumship wise, spiritual wise, and even just tarot wise, you're going to be making these crazy connections. So Melinda's book talks about her experiences. Um, it talks a little bit about, I believe it talks a little bit about her near death experience, but it talks about like the afterlife and connecting with spirit and that her experiences with that. Um, <clears throat> she does a lot of like, um, her like her points of view of of different things so it's really it's really cool I, I really enjoyed her book um so I would definitely recommend it for people because it was special to me <laughs> um and so I, I thought I would share that too okay so those are the books that I would recommend for mediumship um when I woo, when I was um <laughs> when I mentioned how sometimes you can find spiritual mentors, mediumship mentors, um I stumbled across a medium at a crystal shop that I was reading tarot in and she was hosting a like a psychic development class. So I actually attended her class and this is the binder that I would keep all of my like um all of the you know paperwork and stuff the worksheets and things in that. And it was an amazing class. I have to say that from the class, um, I really opened up to trusting myself when I was what, with what I was seeing in my third eye. Um, before that I wouldn't trust it. And so, and that was one of the big messages that the medium, um, herself would tell me. And then also other readers would say that, you're not trusting yourself enough. And it was true. It was like I would see things in my third eye <laughs> or my mind's eye. And I would think, well, I'm making that up. It's in my head. And so I wouldn't trust it as a message. And so this class, there was an activity where we were actually um, doing our aura readings on each other. And I sat there in front of the student that I was practicing with. And I just started seeing 
all this stuff in my third eye, right? And of course you're thinking I'm making this up, right? That's the first thing you think of because your ego gets in the way and you start not trusting yourself. <laughs> And then I just started just, I, what you have to do is you have to verbalize what you're saying, what you're hearing or what you're seeing or experiencing. So once I started doing that, the student that I was reading was actually making connections to what I was saying. And it was crazy cool. So you just have to kind of get over that hump. So I would have to say, if you can take a psychic development class, I highly recommend it. If you could take some sort of mediumship class or... Anything that's going to allow you to work with other people in the flesh, like person to person, um, will really help enhance your trust in yourself and your trust in your ability. So that's another thing I would recommend. I really want to take another class. I really want to be a part of something. Um, I'm hoping that spirit will, will bring to me <laughs> another teacher or a mentor. I'm hoping that spirit will reveal a class that I could take, whether it's in person or, or online. Sometimes that happens too. You know, if it's meant to be for you, it'll happen and it'll be like enough money that you can afford or the dates are that it happens will be, it just so works with your schedule. Like it's just, it's crazy how that stuff will align with you when it's meant to be. So I'm waiting for that because I do want to take another another class, um, another mediumship class. <clears throat> okay. Another tip I have is have a, no a notepad, a notebook. I would say get a journal and dedicate it as your spirit journal. Now I have a spirit journal. It's not, it's in my bedroom. I don't keep it here. I should have, I should have grabbed that. <laughs> oh, well. Um, I have a spirit journal where I was writing, literally after my brother passed away, I was writing down every experience or every sign or message that I saw, a number sequence, weird thing like that, like that thing with Melinda's book um, that I was experiencing within that year of him passing away. So that was my dedicated spirit journal. That was the book that I was writing everything in. And you need to, I recommend doing that because you can look back on it. You will, in that book, in your spirit journal, I recommend writing your dreams that you remember, writing down any messages that you receive, number sequences you notice, date, everything. <laughs> um, write down any weird experiences, any weird synchronicities. Um, just write it all down. And, and it's like you're keeping a record of this stuff, right? Because I guarantee you, the more you go into this, it's gonna happen more frequently. And you really want to track it. So have a spirit journal. Another thing is also have a journal or a notepad that you can just solely write your scribbles or your your notes when you're doing a reading. So I haven't yet, <laughs> I've done it a little bit because there's a service that I used to offer, which I wanna bring it back, um, where I would, for a client, they would purchase the reading and I was doing like aura energy readings on them. And part of the session was I was sitting in a meditation for about five to 10 minutes um, looking at their photo and I was writing down whatever came to mind that was an exercise that was enhancing my mediumship, but it's a different form of mediumship. I feel like it's the mediumship that I'm given the ability to look at their energy, their aura. <laughs> that I could do, but the connecting with a past loved one is where I get nervous. So that's where I need to practice more. Um, but I would recommend dedicating a journal just for that, just for your notes. And then a, another journal, or you could do the two, same one, I don't know, I mean, it's up to you, <laughs> where you pretty much, you keep a record of every spiritual experience that you are having while on this journey. Okay, some other tools that I recommend are some oils. So I have oils everywhere in my, in my room. Um, these are oils that were created by other witches, mediums, spiritual people, healers, Whoever, whatever. I want it. If you create it, I want it. <laughs> I just think it's so special when someone puts their own magic into something that they make to aid you in your process. So I have a whole shit ton of oils. There's a whole bunch more here. <laughs> um, 
But some of the ones that I have are my favorite. This is called, um, this is by Forrest and Crow. This is Intuition. It's Intuition Elixir. And it's basically oil that you can anoint yourself with before you do a reading. So I sometimes will anoint myself before I do a reading with my Intuition oil. Or my favorite right now, this is um, a lavender scented. It's infused with... Um, amethyst <laughs> it's infused with amethyst and it's called the crystal ball oil um and i actually on my instagram i posted a sunshine oil created by the same person her name is michelle um and she actually creates these oils i had to pull the sticker off of this one because it was starting to peel but um this is my intuition oil as well Lavender scent, you guys, is perfect for cleansing. It's perfect for calming your emotions. <laughs> it's really good for meditation, okay? So lavender is definitely something I would recommend getting a lavender oil. And if you have one infused with um, amethyst, even better. Amethyst is perfect for your psychic abilities, your third eye, calming your emotions it's 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 everything so i totally recommend something lavender scented even if it's just lotion something to just get you going okay and then crystals let's talk about crystals so um <laughs> the other tip i have and i did a video about how to meditate or how i meditate so tips for that when you're meditating, meditating is huge when you are connecting with spirit or when you are just tapping into your higher self or even just to focus. So when you are meditating, I recommend crystals to kind of put that energy into, okay? Now, um, we all have our favorite crystal, right? There's our favorite. So this is mine, <laughs> one of mine. This is my Labradorite Palm Stone. This one is infused with Reiki. Um, it's the, the Palm Stone. I took it with me when I was Reiki 1 certified. So this stone will always be my healing meditated stone. It is my go-to. So we all have one of those, okay? Labradorite is really good for your psychic abilities. It's really good for grounding your energy into one section, okay? Um, especially if you're all scattered. So I totally recommend um, a Labradorite and I recommend a palm stone um, for a lot of meditative uses because it fits in your palm and you can hold it and it's just it balances easily so if you want to balance it on your chest or you want to lay down and balance it on your forehead it sits there perfectly <laughs> so palm stones are good another palm stone um, or another stone in general is smoky quartz so when you are connecting with spirit, I do recommend smoky quartz for grounding, grounding your energies um, because you're going to be so high into the astral <laughs> when you're meditating and you're connecting with spirit. You are working with the upper chakras. You're working with the crown, your third eye, and a lot of your communication. So when you're working up, up, up here, you need to be grounded down here. <laughs> and so smoky quartz is really good for that. Um, this is a raw piece of smoky quartz. It's really small, so it fits in your hand just easily. So I, I recommend, you know, something like that, or you could do more of a tumbled, um, this is like a tumbled stone of smoky quartz, or you could do a palm stone. So this is a palm stone. It's more of like a, like that. Palm stones are my favorite <laughs> for meditation. Um, <clears throat> if you are, um, like, okay, so when you're connecting with spirit, you know, there's, you always, you always will have it in the back of your mind of, I don't want to connect with something negative or whatever. I always recommend having like a black tourmaline around. Okay. I wouldn't recommend holding it while meditating. Um, but if you want to set the intention for protection, you know, if you have a black tourmaline to me, anything black, um, will absorb the negative energies. So you could have a black tourmaline around for that sake, but I would not recommend meditating with black tourmaline. Um, I think you just need something more that you could see through like clear. I don't know. To me, it's just like you allow the messages, everything, the energies to go through and black tourmaline is so dense to me it's like it kind of acts as a block you know what i mean so keep that in mind when you're meditating <laughs> 
Um, another stone I recommend for meditation or calming your energies is 100% aquamarine. Um, aquamarine is really good for focus. It's good for, you know, people who are panicked or anxiety prone. It's really good for just calming your calming yourself. So if you're nervous about the negative stuff or you're nervous about connecting with spirit, perhaps have some aquamarine on hand. It's so, it's so soothing. <laughs> so have some of that. Um, and then of course, like I said, I mentioned, um, to have some amethyst. So this is the palm stone amethyst that I have. I, like I said, I, I really like palm stones for meditation. So you can have something like that or even go for something raw. Okay. It's easy to hold. It's just not as like comfortable as a palm stone. <laughs> but amethyst is perfect for that psychic stuff. And then there's also those crystals that are just you dedicate solely for you and your spirit guide. Um, so one of them for connecting with spirit is my eye of Shiva. Okay, this stone, oh my God. <laughs> it's creepy because it looks like an eye, but it is solely, I use it solely for spirit work. It is, it sees beyond the realm. It's, that's what the intention is that I put for the stone. Keep in mind, you could put that intention in any stone. You could put that for your smoky quartz. You could put that for your aquamarine. It doesn't matter, but I set that stone for my eye of Shiva. Because just look at how fucking creepy she is. She's an eye. Like, come on. <laughs> so she's like the third eye. Um, <laughs> that's so weird. <laughs> but I set the intention for her to be my all-seeing stone. So when I am working with spirit work, I like to have her on the table. I also have her on the table for readings. You just, you, sometimes you guys don't see it. I don't like to have her in super pl plain view because she can be a little creepy to some people. <laughs> um, and then the other stones I have are my whales. These are my guides. So as you guys know, whales are one of my favorite animals, but they're also a spirit guide for me. Um, so I have two um, tumbled stones that I found at a crystal shop that has the whale printed on it. <laughs> so this is just plain dyed agate, I believe. And then this is um, amethyst, which I thought was so fucking perfect because amethyst is my birthstone and um, it's the chevron amethyst, I think. I don't know, <laughs> but it has a whale on it. So I was like, that's too perfect. So I have two whale stones and, and these are my spirit guide like stones. So whenever I have them around, I like to set the intention that my guides are with me. Um, so dedicate certain crystals to your meditation practice you guys i feel like my camera is going down okay dedicate certain crystals to your meditation practice like i said it could be any kind of crystal but have like one or two that you know when you are holding it you're doing a specific kind of a healing or a specific reading so like i said this labradorite is always my go-to for meditation or my spirit guide stones are always for spirit guides or my queen of Shiva, my queen of Shiva, my eye of Shiva is my spirit stone. Okay. You dedicate certain ones for that so that you know, every time you have it with you, it's going to work with you for that specific purpose. <clears throat> That's what crystals are for. Um, okay. <coughs> excuse me I've been talking too much um but ba basically that's all I have for you those are tips and tricks um the last thing is if you guys lasted this long <laughs> I wanted to wait till the very end for this because I didn't want to um have a whole bunch of people just like jump for this and not watch the whole video but if you guys waited this long um I want to offer practice readings okay now, I'm not going to do everybody because I'm pretty sure I will get a number of emails <laughs> um, that I will get a number of e email requests for this. But I want to practice my connection with spirit. <clears throat> I want to practice my mediumship more because this is the path that I want to take. So that said, um, these readings, these practice readings that I want to do will be, will be free. They will be short and sweet. They're not going to be like long drawn out readings or anything like that. They will be short and sweet. If I decide to do it in a video, 
which I most likely will, um, or it'll be just like a quick little body in the body of, a, of an email. Um, don't expect, <laughs> don't expect mega detail and don't expect a full blown reading. This is free. Okay. It's free, but it's for my practice. Um, so if you would not mind me attempting to connect and practice, practice, you guys, I'm saying practice as in, please do not have super high expectations of me connecting with like all of these past loved ones for you. Because like I said, I'm practicing. <laughs> um, with the with the uh, with the exception of maybe I'll probably I'll probably throw in there like a tarot reading too I just because that's just part of me <laughs> um and then if you would give me feedback after that's what I ask for is if I give you this free service as a practice please give me some feedback after an exchange I would really appreciate it so here's what you need to do if you want to request a free practice mediumship reading from me, I will need this. One, send me an email. My email is in the description box. It's thecacklingmoon at gmail.com, okay? Send me an email with, in the subject line, please, in the subject line, put um, mediumship practice reading or practice reading, mediumship reading or whatever. Um, and I need you to send me one, number one, in this email, write down your first name, okay, your date of birth, and, well, you don't need to put your date of birth, just your first name, God, this is so confusing, <laughs> send me your first name, and I need a photo of you, okay, I need to be able to connect with an image of somebody <laughs> to do that, especially if I'm going to like do the aura because like, I could do the aura reading the mediumship like that, but I need something to focus on. OK, so your first name and a photo of you, a recent photo, nothing old, just a recent photo of yourself. And if you want to add a question or like a little bit of a description of yourself or the question or what you're what it is you're looking for, I would really appreciate it. I am not going to get through every request that I receive. So if I get five requests in my inbox, I may do all five, maybe. <laughs> if I get 100 requests in my inbox, I may only do a couple. So please, if you do not receive a, um, if you don't receive a response back from me, just know that it's because I, I'm pretty sure I will receive a lot of requests. And I am not here to do full free, full blown free reading services for everybody. This is for my practice. So if I feel like I connect with you, I will do a reading for you. And you will know because you will receive a response back from me. Okay. So please, please, please send me an email. Put the subject line free mediumship reading. Um, include your first name and your, a photo of yourself and um, a question or any like some detail about what you're looking for um, and then I will do a practice reading on you if I feel called to <laughs> I just I'm looking to practice a little bit and I'm looking also to receiving some feedback you know and um, but only if you are open and willing to receive a, a message so just go ahead and do that. Thank you guys for watching the whole length of my video. <laughs> and if you have any questions about your path, your practice, mediumship, or anything that I talked about, please leave a comment below. I will do my best to respond. And until then, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, my loves.